the state of my collection. In this video, you will see all of the watches that I own. And with each watch that I'm showing you, I will be telling you a little bit of the rules of my collection. So by the end of this video, you will understand why do I own what I own and where is the sense of it. And also this on my face will be gone tomorrow. So <laughs> keep watching. And we are starting with the Black Bay 36. This is actually an original uh, Black Bay 36. Uh, recently, uh, Tudor did a big overhaul of this watch. They did a lot, a lot of like little small changes, but with every single change that they made, they made this watch worse. So uh, this uh, original BB36 is pretty much uh, an instant classic. Uh, I absolutely love it. And this is super unusual watch for my collection because as, as, as you might know that I collect vintage and all the rest of my collection is actually vintage watches. This BB36 is actually exception of the rule uh, of my collection and that's uh, th this watch has a lot of sentimental value. That's why I decided that this is going to be the only watch that I will keep. Uh, but I will not be buying any more modern watches because I collect vintage. Vintage is so much better. And from this watch, we are moving to the next very, very cool watch. Um, Seiko uh, 7002 Diver. You, you might uh, know that I moved to Florida and I actually often, I swim almost every day. I swim a lot and I used to swim with a modern watch Seiko uh, SKX but because I collect vintage I moved even my swimming watch uh, to vintage so now uh, this uh, Seiko 7002 uh, with a full overhaul all new gaskets all pressure tested is my only swimming watch uh, and uh, that works amazing. Uh, don't listen to people who uh, would tell you uh, the uh, vintage watches are somehow less capable or you should uh, keep them very, very far from the water. As you can see, I'm swimming with my vintage watch. It can handle it. I absolutely love it. And we are moving to the next watch. Um, Vintage Seiko 45GS, uh, 4522 uh, This one has a high beat movement and uh, this one actually has a case that's very, very similar, almost like 44GS. Uh, grammar of design, this watch looks so good. This watch is like absolutely unbelievable. Uh, recently, I uh, was able to find gaskets for this watch. So all gaskets are replaced and this watch was pressure tested. It's waterproof now. All of the watches that I own, uh, for me, I buy them to wear them. So the only, the only value for me to own the watch is if I will be able to wear it, if I will be able to wear it a lot. And now when I know that my 45GS is actually waterproof, that increases the value of this watch much more for me personally, because I will be able to like uh, wear it in the rain and uh, so on, like wash dishes with my grand Seiko and do things like that. And the next watch on my collection is this solid gold Hamilton Van Horn electric. So that was actually the very first watch in the world where, powered by the battery. And this watch actually, I have very cool, not American, actually British, uh, but solid gold bracelet. So this is solid gold watch on a solid gold bracelet. And what you can uh, learn about my collection from this watch, that I like to be contrarian. I like watches that other people hate. And right now, everybody hates gold. Everybody loves these like stainless steel sports watches, stainless steel, steel. Did I, did I mention steel? I roll it. 
that's why I absolutely hate steel. And I actually want to move all of my collection to uh, maybe like a, a, after some time, after some very long time, uh, to solid gold. Solid gold absolutely attracts me and the value of solid gold because everybody hates it so much. Prices are so, so low. So the value is so, so high. And the watch like that, uh, solid gold watch on a solid gold bracelet, just like amazing. And they, they actually don't cost that much. So we are moving to the next watch that you probably saw on my channel many times. So this is military issued Seiko RAF Gen 1 uh, 7828. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this watch was um, issued to British uh, military pilots uh, in uh, 1980s. So the, the only, there was no civilian version of this watch. This watch was actually designed for the military. The only way you could have get, uh, got it is uh, to be actually RAF pilot, which is like so, so cool. This is like real, true, cool watch. Not like your, uh, those like uh, jewelry Rolexes. <laughs> Did I mention a Rolex? A Rolex! What you can actually learn from this watch. The, the future direction of my, um, on my collection is uh, only solid gold and military. So I pretty much don't collect, uh, I, I don't want to have stainless steel watches in my collection uh, anymore because they are so common, they are so uninteresting. Like if something is stainless steel, it needs to be like absolutely mind-blowing. It needs to be like so, so cool watch that is like, like best of the best of the stainless steel. And that's definitely a military issued uh, watches that uh, you couldn't buy, you actually had to be issued a watch and watch as cool as this Seiko RAF Gen 1. So your Rolex Doitona didn't even stand close to this watch. And then next watch in my collection, it was actually a gift. It's such a cool watch, but I would never actually buy something like that for myself. And I'm so glad uh, my friend actually gifted it to me. So this is 35 millimeter uh, Squale Diver, uh, Squale Quartz Diver from uh, 1980s. So this is uh, uh, 100 Atmos Saphir 2001. Such a, such a cool, cool watch. Uh, it has... Uh, it actually has a, a quartz movement that uh, become pretty expensive because they are rare and uh, uh, CWC uh, fat boy uh, watches are actually using them. Uh, another th cool thing about this watch is that uh, obviously screw down crown, it has backlight bezel and this bezel has kind of like the best action, bezel uh, clicking action I uh, I actually uh, know. I do wear this watch. And unfortunately, the value of this watch is not as high as uh, my other watches. It's actually pretty low. So, uh, and I don't wear it often. So what you can, so my rule is that I should wear the most expensive watches the most because why do they pay so much, right? So, because this watch is not that expensive, it's okay for, for me to wear it very, very occasionally, uh, but something kind of like, I don't know, like solid gold and solid gold bracelet, that's something that I will be wearing uh, much more often comparing to the watch which is much, much cheaper. And the next watch in my collection is the secret link that uh, nobody knows these watches exist, uh, so you can see it here. So uh, people who own this watch, uh, I, I actually don't know if uh, I can share any information by this time about this watch or I cannot. So what I'm going to share is uh, some information actually leaked out about this watch, so I'm going to show you. So a uh, few owners uh, of this uh, Ming were actually uh, spotted on different events. So you can uh, see pictures of this watch from, uh, for example, Hodinki uh, events. Uh, also, uh, Ming collectors on Watch You Seek noticed that this watch, it actually appeared on Ming.com website, uh, 
uh, and here's all the pictures so they noticed a uh, bunch of things that for example there were only 50 of these watches made uh, but after that, there was like a reorganization of the website and now you cannot even find information about this secret watch on the mink.com again like once i can uh, talk more about this watch i will but there is very very interesting dilemma for me about this watch so the watch is so cool so i had the opportunity to be one of those 50 people who uh, uh, were able to buy this watch so i definitely bought the watch but the watch does not fit my collection i collect vintage you can uh, notice the the watch is still uh, in the plastic i did not open the plastic just yet. I'm dying to actually try this watch. I'm dying to actually wear this watch. But, but what if I don't like it? I, I like vintage, right? And it's going to be like I opened it and now I wear it just like occasionally, right? I, I can't, I can't do it. Like these watches are so cool. Everybody who got them immediately started wearing them. This actually could be the only watch in plastic that, that, that exists. So once I open it, the value will go down drastically and like what if i don't like it so i i still didn't decide what what exactly what will i be doing uh with with this watch i don't know if you guys have recommendations what i should do with it uh, <laughs> let me know and with the ma magic of the internet we just teleported to the new york city where we're gonna take a look at the rest of my collection and look at that i shaved and we are starting with uh, Hamilton Gilbert from 1940s in solid gold. Uh, you guys probably noticed that I do like solid gold, but what I do even more is authenticity. I like the watches that I own to be very, very well documented. And two brands that are the best documented. And that's why, why I keep talking about these two brands over and over and over is Vintage Hamilton and Vintage Grand Seiko. Uh, so every single watch is, has catalog shot, has multiple uh, high-res pictures of everything, of the dial, hands, like you know exactly, for example, you take a look at Hamilton Gilbert, you know exactly what hands should be there, how the dial should look like, if the dial is refinished or not refinished or original. It's amazing how well uh, vintage Hamilton and vintage Grand Seiko are documented. And uh, the popular vintage brands like vintage Rolex and vintage Omega don't even stand close. So you take, uh, for example, like they just, you have no idea if that dial was ever sold with that watch. What are the hands with uh, Omega Seamasters? It's a mess. And you have no idea what you're buying, if it's correct, if it's original, if it's half Franken. But with vintage Hamilton and vintage Grand Seiko, it's not possible. Every single watch is so, so well documented. And that's how I know that what I own is fully original. And from this solid gold watch, we are, uh, we are moving to uh, the watch made uh, of a cheap material, uh, very, very popular uh, stainless steel. And as I told you guys, like for me to own watch in stainless steel, it should be something absolutely extraordinary. And the Fab D is absolutely extraordinary military issued watch. That's a grail. That's the, this, this watch is so, so rare. It's impossible uh, to find. The watch was uh, the only way you can just uh, go to a store and, and, and buy it. You, you had to be uh, in the US Air Force and you had to be a navigator to be issued this super, super rare watch. Uh, it has solid bars. It was designed, this iconic design uh, was actually uh, designed by military. Uh, it has anti-magnetic cage. This, this watch is sick. And we, we're gonna talk later in this video about this watch uh, more in details. 
we are uh, moving to the next actually very nice watch so that's actually a movado uh, kingmatic this one has engine turn dial unfortunately this watch is not solid gold is actually uh, gold filled over stainless steel uh, and one thing that uh, you need to what 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 i actually don't like is i don't like to have uh, watches like this one which has emotional attachment for me i actually traded uh, this watch with a jazz musician uh, bill saxton uh, and i have a lot of memories it, it, it was amazing uh, but i don't wear it uh, that often uh, mostly because uh, it's not solid gold uh, and now because i have emotional attachment to, to this watch now it has a slot in my collection and i don't like to have many watches i actually want to concentrate my collection i actually want to own a few watches that i wear a lot and often and now because it has an emotional attachment i cannot sell it i cannot uh, uh, take this uh, watch out of my collection uh, and it's it's kind of a dilemma so that's that's something uh, i do not like the future of my collection where this collection is going what is the next that i'm going to buy uh, and sell so you guys notice that i like solid gold so definitely i'm moving towards solid gold uh, and also uh, i see myself owning uh, very cool military issued watches uh, for the reasons that I told you. Um, so basically, um, it's going to be solid gold in the military. That's, that's kind of where this collection is going. Now, what I'm going to buy next in the short term. So if you're going to look at the mil my military watches, so if you look at these two watches, like Hamilton Fab D and uh, Seiko RF Gen 1, this is such a, such a cool pair. This pair is almost impossible to improve um, like i don't know like what 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 can i buy that wouldn't be like half million dollars that can improve the spare like that that's just like amazing but in terms of solid gold yes i do have um a space to grow uh and i think i think in the short term uh, i will be buying solid gold watches especially i'm thinking about something waterproof something that i can put new gaskets uh, it can pass a pressure test so i can wear it everywhere in in any situation so if there is one watch from this whole collection that i own that you guys should remember from my collection and you should you should learn more is this one hamilton fab d um, this is the watch that you, you could have no idea about. This is the grail. This is that watch that, remember, maybe like 15, 20 years ago, you could buy uh, Millsaps for like $3,000 uh, because nobody knew about them. This is that watch. This is that watch that you can still buy around like $3,000, maybe slightly less. But that's the grail. That's the Millsap. That's that watch that will that will be like crazy expensive that's such a such a cool watch so uh that uh, you guys need to watch this video uh, which goes into details about why and how this watch is so so cool and why you need to buy it now go buy this watch but first go 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 watch this video